Welcome to the Own It Powercast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, a place where you can come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 127, Going Back Different, Reconnecting with Family and Friends. So if you've been listening all month, you know it's been all about practicing self-care around the holidays and we've been talking about changing all the work you've been doing on yourself this year, past two years, whatever time frame you have, this is the time of year where that can come to the fore, that can become a problem, that can raise issues, that can be interesting, or it can be wonderful. Today, I want to talk about how, especially if you haven't seen family and friends much this year, you may have a very different experience than you did last time you were there. If you've been working on yourself all year, things are changing for you. And since you're in it every day, you may not even notice some of the big changes until you get with folks who knew you when. So let's get into the culture shock for each of you. That may happen as you return home because you're returning home, well, different than when you were there last. So usually the way we know we've been changing is we start seeing things differently We have different opinions. We form different beliefs, possibly more open-minded beliefs. We look at people differently. And most importantly, we can look at ourselves differently. We talk about personal growth. It matters to us, the issues that we're working on, the behaviors that we're trying to change, they matter. Maybe you've been honoring, owning, and expressing your feelings this year. So those are really going to matter to you. So you talk about it. You feel differently about yourself. Maybe your self-perception is changing if you're really working on your self-confidence. How you perceive others also, like we've talked about before, can become an inside-out job where we have much more detachment and empathy and perhaps compassion and understanding, like we talked about last week. Because as we heal what we've been through, what we have struggled with, all the context around it. We have a better understanding of why, like why we may have been behaving the way we have, that there aren't any vacuums. And they were probably just really maladaptive coping skills that we adopted to survive. So now we can look at others and understand they're probably doing the same thing. So you feel differently about yourself And you may start seeing other people differently as well. The other thing is you've probably been getting feedback in recent months or weeks from people that you work with, your friends, perhaps your partner, maybe even some siblings that you're close to or cousins or what have you, because they're going to notice healthy changes. And the healthier the people that are around you, the more they're going to be able to support that and actually not be afraid to tell you. Like, I notice you're practicing better self-care, they say, or good for you setting boundaries. Or I'm really proud of you for taking that risk and going back to school. So you've been changing. You have been working on changing beliefs about yourself, about the world, changing behaviors. You may have been formulating some new values that you want to begin living out making a parent in your life. You may have made some big concrete changes in your life this past year as well. Maybe around your health, your career, your relationships, or geography where you live. So take a moment and think about where you were a year ago as opposed to where you are today and how you feel about the work that you've been doing and are doing on yourself. So one of the reasons why I wanted to do this episode is often the first time we notice our changes 
is when we get back around family and maybe old friends that we grew up with and haven't seen in a while. Because that's where we can really see some contrast and see how far we've come. We've mentioned before that there's no better way to see how far you've come in an area of personal growth until you see someone else doing what you used to do. And it makes you cringe. But it also makes you very relieved and grateful. You're like, thank God I don't do that anymore. I don't ever want to go back. Because again, sometimes we're in it every day and we can't see the forest for the trees. We can't see the growth, how far we've come from where we used to be. I think it's really empowering to remind ourselves, to journal about, to talk about how far we've come for two reasons. One, so you don't lose hope and motivation to keep going. But number two, it also empowers you to imagine taking on even bigger goals in your growth next year and the year after that. Empowerment comes from doing. We say that often here on the show for a reason. Your subconscious takes that experiential data and believes that if you can do that, then maybe you can do this. If you're strong enough to do that, you're strong enough to do the next thing. So going back home. So let's first talk about some things you might notice when you go back home or just see people you haven't seen in a while. Things that maybe they still do and that you used to do and are really trying hard to no longer do. It's limitless what you can come up with here, but here are a few things to get you thinking along these lines. So one of the first things that clients usually tell me that they notice is triangulation. If you're not aware of it, triangulation is when the two of you talk about her, but no one talks directly to her about it. And so gossip, right? Whether they're saying something positive or negative, obviously positive is better, but it's still not good. So when you're on the phone or when you run into people, maybe family, where everyone wants to talk about dad, but no one wants to confront dad or your sister with all her issues, you're really going to notice it and it's going to feel really uncomfortable because maybe all year you've been working on trying to be more assertive and talk to people directly and not talk behind their back because you're scared. So triangulation is one of the things you'll notice. Along with that are shaming you and why statements. Remember, they're statements, not questions. Why are you doing that? Are you always, or you never, or you can't, or why can't you ever? They can become a normal part of conversation in families where that was how we spoke. That's how we talk to one another. And they don't see what's wrong with it. That other focus has become so embedded in the family culture. And what's fascinating is you'll notice this if you're around extended family, assuming they haven't worked on themselves, you're going to see a lot of behaviors that are very similar for obvious reasons. So you may want to go running out of the room at some point if you experience some of these. Along with you and why statements are just lots of questions, really intrusive, where it's not a just a flow, a genuine back and forth where each of you are showing interest in the other person, of course, but also sharing about self and using I statements and not making it like an inquisition. Being the one asking lots of questions keeps you in control, so you think. It's a very powerful stance. It also guards your heart and protects you from anyone finding out anything about you because that can feel very vulnerable. Maybe you're uncomfortable with where you are. You don't want them to know the truth about your life right now. So lots of questioning. Now, inherent in all of this is judgment and maybe blame. You know, judgment is really just making negative comments about someone without compassion, without possibly even knowing the whole story, even though we swear we do. Taking a one-up position, putting someone down so you can feel better. Blame is 
part of the grief process? If someone isn't actively grieving, then blaming is just a way to deny responsibility. Because remember, taking responsibility when someone is just learning how to do that can seem very scary and overwhelming. I know in the face of that, that doesn't make sense, but what if they own it and they screw it up? What if they don't know how to accept those things about themselves? Usually people don't take responsibility when they have a lot of defensiveness and a lot of not good enough, a lot of shame, along with maybe some healthy guilt around things they actually did or didn't do. So it's hard for them to take ownership initially without first maybe some healing of old wounds, some loving self-acceptance, some self-compassion and understanding. So maybe you've really been trying not to do these behaviors anymore, or maybe there are others that I'm not mentioning that you're thinking of now. Be proud of yourself, number one, because you are making your relationship with yourself and others that much healthier. Anytime we don't do those things I listed, we create more emotional safety and trust in our relationships. And that's a big deal. Because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters, right? The quality of our relationships. So conversely, here are some things that maybe you've become better at over the past year or so as you've been working on yourself. Because as we heal, as we heal who hurt us, we understand how we hurt others from that, how we've let ourselves down, maybe how we've hurt our own life. We start to adopt better behaviors. The first one is, we just talked about personal responsibility. You take so much more ownership of what you think, what you feel, what you value, what you choose, and you take responsibility for your own happiness of allowing things to happen in your relationships, let's say, or not taking charge, or not being assertive enough to ask for what you need, or not saying no or saying boundaries to things that are toxic. So taking responsibility. You probably are also getting a lot better at practicing humility, which means you no longer have to have the answers or be right. You don't have to be perfect. You're not running the universe and it ain't all about you. That's a big side effect of the growth because before people embrace humility, they actually are very self-focused, very fear-based, they have to be right or they can't be okay. They have to be perfect or they're not good enough. All that stuff. And when you start healing, you understand how cool it is to not have to be all that. That you can just be you and you can be guided and you can be teachable and you can learn from others and you can keep growing. It's just a whole different mindset. Along with humility usually comes empathy and compassion versus having a lot of resentment or at least just arm's length connections with others to really protect yourself. Maybe you've been working on grabbing some more compassion for yourself, which is wonderful. As you've been grieving the context and maybe why you struggle with certain behaviors like we mentioned earlier. There are always reasons, folks. And most of us are not psychopaths. So we're hurting and then we hurt others out of our own woundedness. We make poor decisions because we make all of our decisions based on how we really value ourselves and what we really think we deserve. Another thing hopefully you're really working on and getting better at is boundary work. One of my favorite topics and hand in hand with boundary work, of course, is practicing loving detachment. Maybe you really value your boundaries now and you guard your time and you're more selective about who you spend it with. And you realize you're right to say no and to let go of what is going on for everyone else. That can really show up at the holidays, of course, 
How much time are you going to go home and spend? Is it the family's expectation that you're there 24-7 or do you get to go do stuff? How much money do you want to spend during the holidays? What do you want to do for the holidays? All the boundary issues and then learning how to detach from what other people would love to have you do or not do. That's about them. And just because they doesn't mean you. Staying in your lane during the holidays can often be difficult, so boundary work is really important. Trying not to change people. Allowing yourself to grieve that it isn't different as opposed to trying to contort it into something that it can't be. All of this can help you to become more and more comfortable, slowly but surely, being in the moment, being more emotionally present in your conversations, noticing more, noticing people's expressions, their body language, what they're really sharing with you, how it feels to be in the moment with them. Just really taking that in. Now that can be a positive experience or a negative one. But a lot of people spend most of their life running from the moment because growing up the moment was scary and or emotionally unsafe and or at least very awkward and uncomfortable. Not a place where you were going to get needs met or were okay being vulnerable. So getting back to being in the moment is a sure sign that you've been doing the work. And it'd be interesting to observe other family members and friends who either are very good at that or they really struggle. Lots of anxiety, lots of talking about or talking at people and not with them. And finally, maybe you've really accomplished something important and it's changed or it's changing how you see yourself and how you see your new life unfolding. That could be starting your new degree, maybe a new job, maybe a physical fitness goal, perhaps you moved, perhaps you changed your relationship or relationships around you. Maybe you took on a new business venture or focused in on your creativity. Things that you are accomplishing or have accomplished change your sense of self and what you now value. So when you go back, you go back different because that has changed you or it is changing you right now. And we can't undo that, nor do we want to. I think embracing that is really important. It also can feel very awkward and sometimes scary to go back different. Will you be loved? Will you be accepted? Will they cheer you on and support you? Now, if that has already been said to you over the phone and through email and FaceTime and all of that, of course, it's going to make it a lot different going back because you're going in knowing that you're already loved and supported. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they can't support you for a million different reasons. So what can you do? Know that it can't be other than what it is. It is what it is. Practice working on coming to acceptance. Take time for yourself, get grounded, go for a walk, meditate, self-care, journal, share with a friend. Work on detachment. Work on trying not to say anything. To try to get them to understand, get them to see, get them to be different. Also, don't be surprised if it is harder actually to be around them now than before, because again, you are changing. You're not the same person who used to hang out with them before. And it's very possible that where you're going and where you want to go may not really be in alignment with who they are and where they want to go. Like we said last week, don't try to get them to see get them to do, get them to be what you want them to be. Try really hard to let them be where they are. And again, this is where the grief work comes in. 
where the discrepancy between what's really going on and what we would wish for in our heart of hearts. There's some emotion that comes up, of course, anger, sadness, frustration, fear, disappointment. The more that we can learn how to first detach and say, okay, that's about them. What's about me? What's about me is usually what I'm feeling. Why is that okay? And why that makes sense? And let myself sit in that. And there's nothing wrong with me wishing for what I'd love to have, but knowing that that's not the case. That brings the focus back to us and off of them, which is really important. If we keep the focus on them, we'll just go nuts and nothing will ever get better. If you keep the focus on you and rather how you want to show up at this moment. You know, some people find it helpful to prioritize other things like gratitude, maybe curiosity, maybe taking this lovely opportunity to practice healthier behaviors. You'll probably have lots of opportunity to do that. And that's not a bad thing. Make it a science experiment. Let go of the outcomes and just see what the hell happens. And like last week, try to be the healthier model. If you do stay connected, remember they've got their own experience going on, like we talked about last time. You might be frustrating them. They might be hurt, disappointed, triggered, conflicted, because now maybe they're looking at their own stuff and they're not ready to, and so they're mad at you. Try not to regress. Try to hold on to who you've become who you are becoming. You know, it's okay if they can't accept the new you or the emerging you. But don't cave and give in to try to be what they need instead. Try to catch yourself. Don't be mad at yourself if you slip and do it. It's probably going to happen. But just catch yourself and then get back on track. And finally, let yourself have your feelings of disappointment at the end. Or maybe you're even glad you're able to be different with them. Some people have that experience. You have historically been responding in a childlike way with mom and dad. And maybe just by changing some stuff on your end, it makes it better. I don't know. Every situation is very different. So today we talked about how this is the time of year we may be going home, in a sense. Maybe seeing family and old friends, perhaps after a long time. With COVID, that may well be most people's reality, so this may be a big adjustment this year. I actually have many clients who have felt secretly relieved that they couldn't go home last year due to the pandemic because it gave them a reprieve. But this year, more people plan to get together, so here we go. So if you've been working on yourself this year, you might just be going back different. And that can be an interesting situation. Today, we talked about also how you may be changing, and how to operate in now unfamiliar territory. Thank you so much for joining me today. May you be proud of the work that you've done and proud of the work that you're doing and getting ready to do. Stay grounded and focused. Hold on to hope. Be sure to check the show notes at ownitpowercast.com to sign up for the newsletter each Tuesday. That's where the bonus downloads are. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.